Welcome back to the channel everybody. My name is Travis and this is Bacon and Backpacking and what a beautiful day. We are in the Dully Sods Wilderness in West Virginia. I think it's my fourth time here. Just doing a quick little overnighter, probably about 20 miles. You know, the idea is to take in some of this beautiful weather. I think it's about a high of 73 today, high of 78 tomorrow with a low of around 52 degrees. Blue skies, we got butterflies out here. We've got mountaintop meadows. You guys are in for a treat. Gonna see a lot of awesome scenery out here and hopefully we find a pretty nice campsite, you know, someplace maybe by Red Creek. You know, get some prime real estate today. We are exactly two miles in and we're starting to get into some of the more beautiful parts of the Ollie Sods here. I'll tell you guys what, I think by the end of this trip I will have spent, uh, I believe, 10 days total in Dolly Sods, you know, hiking and camping. And days like this with the beautiful blue skies get me every time. You know, it doesn't matter how many times I come here, I'm always going to love this place. Little trail update, we're approaching five miles in here pretty shortly. I think this will be the fifth video I've had of Dolly Sods on the channel up to this point, and I'm pretty sure every time I've recorded, you know, something through here, the views are just phenomenal up here. Couldn't ask for a better day. I keep getting lucky out here, man. I think I've only had it rain, you know, one time that I've been up here, so keep lucking out. So I think I'll keep, you know, pushing my odds and keep coming to Dolly Sods. everybody took a short little break about six and a half miles in probably stopped for you know less than 10 minutes just tighten up my shoes move some snacks from the pack to my fanny pack where I can easily reach them you know put some Mio with caffeine in my water bottle but uh yeah we're looking at anywhere from 12 to about 14 miles today so we're roughly at the halfway point you know either way
been making pretty good time today, but we're on big stone colt trail now. And as you guys can see, you know, this is the typical dolly sods experience here with the boulder fields and stuff. I've gone through quite a few of them today. I haven't really recorded it or anything. You know, I don't need to show you guys every little rock, but this is the type of stuff that'll, you know, slow you down a little bit. Obviously, you guys can see how diverse Dolly Sods is. We spent most of our time, you know, up in the meadows so far, and we've been descending for quite a while, hitting the lower elevations. You know, now we're down in more of a wooded area. This is the first spot on this trail system out here where you have some very large trees. You know, typically everything up on, uh, you know, the plateau up there in the meadows, you know, it's pretty small. Like I said, we're at lower elevation, so some of the big boys are out. That's one of my favorite things about Dolly Sods is like, you know, the change in biomes, right? It feels like you visit multiple different places all in one trip. But yeah, we're about nine miles in, which means we should only have like four and a half to go if we do the longest option, and it's about 20 after four. So, I mean, time-wise and body-wise, I can definitely get that done. Question is, do we get all the way there and there's no sites available? <laughs> so that's the question. everybody we'll go ahead and give you a little camp tour so trail is up that way it's a fairly small campsite you get a couple hammocks here maybe one or two tents but um basically i'm going to be eating over here i've got my food hang up that way and we'll go ahead and show you guys the setup real quick so as always i have the warbonnet blackbird hammock and the hammock gear Dyneema tarp with doors, so we've got that all set up today. Um, I was thinking about doing porch mode, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave it set up like this and just go ahead and leave the doors open for ventilation on both ends. I do want to show you guys something real quick, uh, like a little mod that I made for the panel pullouts. And then my pack on this trip is the frameless 38 liter Z packs. That's the Nero 38. So um, sub 10 pound base weight for this trip. I think total I had 16 and a half pounds with, you know, food and two liters of water. So uh, I think it was like nine pounds for, you know, all my gear. So I want to show you guys like a little mod that I did with the panel pullouts here. So obviously the panel pullouts, like the Hammock Gear Dyneema tarp, you know, it's, it's meant to be light, right? It's, you know, somewhere around eight ounces. So it doesn't have a ton of material coverage. It's definitely not the largest tarp. So if you go ahead and take a look in here, these panel pullouts actually give you a ton of space. I don't know if you guys can see it, but instead of the tarp dropping, uh, you know, straight down like an A-frame, these panel pullouts are gonna give you a little bit more spacing. So I really like utilizing those or else the tarp ends up collapsing in on the hammock. I did just have like shock cord loops attached to these guy out points here and I was just looping them over the top. But depending on the pitch of the tarp, you couldn't adjust the tension. So what I ended up doing is just getting like a piece of line and attaching it to the pullout. And then I slipped a Prusik loop on it. So now I can slide up and down. I'll go ahead and show you guys real quick. Yeah, guys, so my tripod's probably not tall enough for you to see like the top of the trekking pole. But let's say that this end is pulled, you know, downward too much. I can just go ahead and slide that Prusik up. And you see how it adjusts the pole. And then same thing on the way down. I can go ahead and straighten it out. And I really like having that because depending on what direction the wind's coming from, sometimes the tarp will like pitch in one direction or another. You can just slide those Prusik loops up and down on that piece of cordage and just adjust things on the fly. So it actually works out pretty well. And you know, not only does it give you like more interior room inside the tarp, but what it also does is, you know, provide a little bit more rigidity 
to the tarp, you know, if the winds are a little bit higher. And if you guys are wondering what system I use to filter my water, this is just a two liter Canuck Vecto bag. And it literally takes like five seconds to just go ahead and scoop up, you know, two liters of water. Um, whereas, you know, if you use like a stock, you know, Sawyer bag or something like that, you might be sitting there all day. So I like the speed of the Canuck. Also too, I like the fact that it's, you know, kind of like a bag form, right? So it's a little bit malleable. I can just throw it, you know, on top of my pack or in my mesh on my pack or something like that. And, you know, instantly I have an extra two liters of water capacity. So I can carry up to four liters at a time, which um, I hate to do, but there have been trails and situations where I've had to. But anyways, and then the filter is just, you know, your run of the mill. Sawyer squeeze, this thing's going on about a year and a half old by now. So probably going to need to be replacing this thing here in not too long. I have my staple trail foods, which are pretty much the lightest way you can get calories. So these are the autumn gold. These things are awesome. They only weigh a couple ounces and they're 210 calories. And then also the Power Crunch protein bars. So between the two of these, you're looking at something like, you know, five ounces with almost 500 calories in it. So for a trip like this, it doesn't really matter. I typically don't, you know, micromanage my food weight on just like an overnight or something like that. But I've been trying to pay more attention to it because, you know, we're going to be spending seven days on a trail in Utah, right? And there's no resupply out there. And with the amount of calories that I'll have to consume on that trip, uh, you know, probably 5,000 a day or, or something like that you know, I'm trying to get the food bag as, <laughs> as light as humanly possible for sure. So I'm just kind of stocked up on like these bars and stuff like that. I have them laying around the house. So they came on the trip. The only notable items that I really have food wise is uh, I have peak refuel. Always have that for dinner, beef stroganoff. And then I've been doing the cold soak oats lately. Um, you know, I don't like sitting around making coffee in the morning, you know, heating up water, stuff like that. I can just cold soak this overnight. It's actually pretty good. It's overnight oats. It has, uh, you know, freeze dried strawberries in it. There's powdered milk in it. There's, I think it's yogurt covered raisins in there as well too. And a handful of pumpkin seeds. So there's something in the neighborhood of almost 700 calories like in this cup. And tonight before I go to bed, I can just pour water in it, put it in my food bag, hang it, wake up in the morning. Food's already done, eat it real quick at the trail. Pretty much all the trips that we've been doing you know, this spring and summer have been geared towards just prepping for Uinta pretty much, you know, staying in shape, hitting higher mileage days, and, uh, you know, just testing some gear and stuff like that.
All right, everybody, I think it's time for dinner. I want to eat this Peak Refuel beef stroganoff. Once I'm done with this, I'm going to head up there, hang my food, and I think we're going to wrap it up for the night, guys. So I think I'll leave you there. Good night, and we'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. It's about 7 o'clock, so, you know, I don't want to make a ton of noise. There's quite a few people up. This guy already has a fire, but my neighbor's not up yet. Um, chances are rolling up the dining at my tarp. Probably woke him up, but just in case he went back to sleep and want to try to be quiet. But anyways, guys, I'm mostly packed up. I'm going to go ahead and eat my breakfast here, which again is going to be these cold soaked oats. And uh, these things are freaking awesome, man. Got a lot of calories and stuff in them. But anyhow, I'm going to eat this, use the bathroom, and then we're going to be hitting the trail probably within like the next 20 minutes. Since we stopped a little bit early yesterday due to campsite availability, you know, we only put in 10 miles. I was planning on 12 to 14. So that means we've got 10 miles out this morning. No big deal. Trail should be fairly empty for the next hour or so at least, you know, until people get out of bed and stuff like that. So I think we're going to go ahead and skip Breathe Mountain this time. You know, I've been up at like three different times and, uh, you know, based off like my schedule and stuff like that, I think I just want to get out of here. But, you know, we are going to still see some really cool stuff. You know, we're going to be on Dobbin for a little bit, which is one of my favorite trails in Dolly Sods. And I'm actually taking a new trail on the way out today. It's time for everybody's favorite trail on Dolly Sods, Rocky Ridge. And uh, I'll tell you guys what, go ahead and put it in the comments. Give me, I'll give you three guesses as to why they call this trail Rocky Ridge. And you guys aren't allowed to cheat. No Google. You're not allowed to look it up. But uh, yeah, I want you guys to see if you can figure out why this is called Rocky Ridge. Good news though. is a little bit of a view but anyways <clears throat> we got at least a solid probably if i recall correctly like mile mile and a half of stuff like this so <laughs> probably not going to record a ton i'll get some shots so you guys can see you know <clears throat> what you're getting in for if you get out here but can't record too much because the camera's just going to be shaking all over the place <laughs> We are luckily done with Rocky Ridge. <laughs> um, it's like, it's a cool trail, do you know what I mean? I'm cool with doing it once every two years, but it does beat up, you know, your feet and stuff like that. Obviously it kind of, you know, slows down your hiking pace. We are now on Red Creek Trail, which means we are less than a mile from the campsites that I was hoping to push to last night. So we'll swing by there, I might get like another half liter of water while I'm there, I'm not sure yet. But anyways, we'll see if, you know, we made a good decision yesterday by just stopping early and, you know, getting a campsite that was available. Early bird gets the worm, man. I have not seen a single person on the trail yet, not one. But I've also eaten every spider web <laughs> in Dolly Sod, so just keep that as a reminder. Early bird gets the worm, maybe you get a trail to yourself, but you're also gonna take a lot of spider webs to the face. About four miles down this morning, only about six to go. We're getting ready to go up what's really the only climb out here on this route. It's a very mild elevation gain. I think it's 
20 miles total, only about 2,300 feet at gain, so, you know, not too shabby. But anyways, we'll probably get out of here in the next, like, two and a half hours or so, so we'll see you guys on trail. Start hearing the splishy splashy. <laughs> We're on everybody's favorite trail in Dolly Sods, which is the infamous Dobbin Grade. Pretty much like a swamp down here, but I'll tell you what, people tend to leave this trail out of most loops, and people tend to discourage you know other folks from doing Dobbin Grade. I actually highly disagree. This is one of my favorite trails in Dolly Sods. Uh, guys, I mean, look, right? So it, it's just beautiful and open out here and this is how it's gonna be most of the rest of the hike. It is kind of like a swamp, right? So there are spots where, you know, your leg's gonna get sucked up in the mud. In some cases, possibly knee deep, but I still recommend everybody does Dobbin Grade at least once. Trust me, the views are awesome. I think you guys will love it. And if some of you guys don't want to get too soaked and you want to avoid the deepest crossing on Dobbin Grade, there is a little trail right here, Raven Ridge, that you can take to go around the worst parts of Dobbin. But hey, it's big in a backpacking. You know, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're going to enjoy the full beauty that Dobbin Grade has to offer along with all the drawbacks. I mean, you know, why else would we backpack, right? Last time I walked out here, it was probably somewhere in the ballpark of knee deep, so about to find out. Trekking poles help with this for sure. Well, so far, it doesn't quite seem to be. Oh, yep, it's knee deep again. There's my knee. <laughs> <laughs> but we got something like you know four miles left so no big deal man shorts must have been too long they got wet note to self have to wear shorter shorts next time Seriously though, how do you not do Dobbin Grade, man? Look at it. This is the Dolly Sods experience here. I know what everybody's thinking. Oh, I don't want to walk through knee-deep water. Really not that big of a deal. You know, if you have appropriate footwear, if you have a non-waterproof, lightweight trail runner, a good quality sock, something like Darn Tough, um, you know, the shoes are gonna dry out way faster than you think they are. Okay, and personally, I do this every trip I'm on. I just walk through water crossings and I don't get blisters. The shoes dry out, you know, before it's a problem. Now, if you're wearing boots or something, maybe not a good idea, but, uh, you know, works for me. It's way too close to, you know, the the trailhead for the way I typically do trips. I'll tell you guys what, hammock, go nice, right there. And, you know, <laughs> I think this would be a really cool hang up here. You know, you could leave the side that's facing Dobbin open on the tarp. Man, I think that would be cool. This would be an awesome campsite. I'm gonna have to plan a trip sometime. Um, I'll mark this on the GPX file too, guys, with, uh, what should we call it? Dobbin Overlook Campsite? Let's call it that, Dobbin Overlook Campsite. So look for that on the GPX file if you guys wanna have uh, a really nice hammock spot here.
All right, everybody, unfortunately, getting close to the car. So I think it's gonna be time to start wrapping it up. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in and joining along on the adventure. If you guys like the content, go ahead and do me a couple favors. First of all, go ahead and smash that like button. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It helps, you know, boost the video in the algorithm. And then two, if you guys wanna see backpacking adventures in Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Kentucky, Michigan, Tennessee, Virginia, uh, New York, uh, Utah coming up here in uh, about a month and a half, right? If you guys want to see backpacking adventures all across the country, go ahead and subscribe. I do have the trip data in the form of a GPX file. That link will be down in the description box. You can go ahead and download that. Plug that into your hiking app of choice. I will be posting that gear list as well too. I've been using Lighter Pack, but think I'm gonna be making the switch to Pack Wizard. But anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Without you guys, the channel doesn't exist. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next adventure. Until then, we'll see you guys next time.